body swap and everyone's job. On August 15th, I put on my DEA staff tracksuit. I testified for the grand jury. Then I went home. I went to my dentist around 11 p.m. since I wouldn't be able to see him for a long time. Then, then I got everyone out of the house. My cousin Billy and my girlfriend Ginger. We went to play racquetball. At what time? It was around 2 a.m. Once we left the house, Dr. Nick went to the pool house and took Roscoe off life support. Then he and Joe dressed Roscoe in my blue pajamas and put his body in my bathroom closet. Bathroom. Then, I, then I took a sedative Dr. Nick had given me, and I, I went to sleep on the bathroom floor. At about two in the afternoon, Ginger woke up, came into the bathroom, and saw me lying there. I heard her holler to Joe that I had fainted. So Joe came running upstairs and put on a pretty good show and called 911. Then Dr. Nick came running in. When the ambulance arrived, I, I slowed my breathing for the medics. I, I learned that in martial arts. Dr. Nick ordered them to put an oxygen mask on me. Did the body switch? According... Ordered them to put an oxygen mask on me and fetch a stretcher. That's when we did the body swap. I got into the closet. Dr. Nick put the oxygen mask on Roscoe and set him on the floor. Then the medics came back and put Roscoe on the stretcher. Dr. Nick went along in the ambulance so he could identify the body at the hospital as Elvis Presley. Vital. Okay. So, this little long two or three minute clip was from Elvis Found a Live documentary that was out on 2011. Now, it has been admitted to by uh, Jesse Elvis to Linda Hood Sigmund um, that he was the voice in that movie, but it was part fiction and part fact. So the fictional part of the whole movie was basically the um, Captain Marvel Jr. part. She kind of went, he said it kind of went a little out overboard on that. Okay, so what I really wanted to stress in the little clips, actually, was the fact that, yes, there was a body switch. I think we finished that yesterday um, in the last video that we did. Okay, so there was a body switch. Um, he identified him as um, Roscoe Holloway. Did that Dr. Nick, when Roscoe was about to expire, knew he was dying and died or whatever, and they put him on life support so that they keep him breathing. Okay? He wouldn't be dead too long. Now, all of us had to go to a grand jury and testify the day before his death. All right? And there's all kinds of records on that. Um, he sold a airplane to someone, actually Vernon did, sold an airplane um, in a sting. This was called Operation Fountain Pen. Elvis worked in the FDA, FBI through the DEA. Somehow he sold an aircraft and the check that came into the bank, it bounced. So they caught the gentleman who had mafia ties. And that was the day before. There was another reason why he would possibly fake his death. And that was, um, had told Deborah Brando, um, Deborah Presley Brando, and she put in her book, um, The Starsea Child. All right. So I think we went over that a couple, maybe one live stream ago. Um, but he had told her in the kitchen, there was a conversation that he had with Elvis, uh, two weeks before he staged his death. And he basically told eight days before he died, he called me and Louise to come over. And he said he had something he needed to tell me. The casket was so heavy we barely could carry it. And there was an air conditioner under it and we heard it running. Not to mention I pushed the sideburn back into place in the wax dummy in the copper casket. All right. So he had told her this. He said to Jean, for some reason it skipped over, so I'm going to back up. All right. 
Deborah, he told me in the kitchen as I sat down and looked me in the head, dead in the eye. Jean, I have to leave. I have to go away. You may not see me for a long time. Maybe never again. Jean's voice broke, but he quickly composed himself. Then he said, he helped put away some Vegas kingpins who were giving cocaine to Billy and David, Elvis' stepbrothers, all right? Um, and he was scared. He didn't know what to, else to do. He felt that our country was being taken down by other countries by targeting our youth. Hold on, I'm not done. With street drugs, cocaine, and heroin. It was, his, it was personal for him. That's why he went to Nixon and got a DEA badge in 1970 to help fight illegal drugs in America. Someone broke into his home and cut off the head of Lisa's teddy bear, placed it on the table on a platter with a note. This could be your daughter's head. These bad guys had leased his plane from Vernon, and they might, and they refused to give it back. That involved a federal investigation. So she goes, your dad was always interested in law enforcement, and now he had a real reason to involve the feds. After all, he was one. Your father was both terrified and baffled. How could anyone get past the gate? up to Lisa's room and get Mabel, her favorite teddy bear, into the dining room and then out again. No answers were good. So basically what happened was is that um, Jean, all right, told her the reason why her father faked his death. Right there, black and white. And this is written just recently just came out i'll give you the uh picture of the cover of the book you guys can look it up all right so there's real evidence there stating that he faked his death first of all there was a threat to lisa marie second of all there was a threat to elvis as well there was plenty of death threats to elvis throughout his uh the last few years of his singing career um, and there was one that was really real. He had to bring um, guns and everything. There was threats to his life. Okay. So because of what he did, the um, mafia figured out he was the mole. And they tried to kill him. All right. So there's two reasons. There's two or three main reasons why he would stage his death. But that would be number one reason. Now, this movie that I just showed you at the beginning might be part fiction and part fact but a lot of the paperwork that they got from the FBI that it was released was actually dated after 1977 some of it was so he was still involved with the DEA and the FBI he might have not done all of that work behind the scenes but he did a lot of it behind the scenes um but I think the main thing I wanted to point out was the breathing technique. He was talking about he did a breathing technique. Now, in the first video, we talked about how um, Joe said that when he turned him over, he took a breath. Well, first of all, Joe knew that he was doing this. He was in on the whole thing. That's what he said in here. Okay? Elvis, the truth about Elvis Aaron Presley in his own words. Also, Elvis said in here that he took had an injection that made him like a comatose type of, of thing. But on the video, he said he took a sedative and then that was prescribed. And then um, did, I used a breathing technique for when the uh, paramedics came. All right. He also mentioned in his book that Ginger, who was the most naive, 
Now, the reason why he called her naive is because he didn't, she didn't spend a lot of time with him. She was always out and about calling her mother or going out, doing stuff with her friends. She wasn't really around that much. So he, re she really wasn't that observant of him. He, she wasn't like Linda Thompson or even Priscilla, who was more attentive and, and, um, attentive to his needs she wasn't as attentive so when he called her naive it's because of that and what took her so long this is the timeline now and you can look it up anywhere but it's explicitly uh, written out um in one of the books i think it's by uh nancy rook i think if i remember correctly <clears throat> or mary jenkins one of those two that she's got up from her nap at like noon and she took a shower and she called her mother and she did her makeup and her hair by the time she got done with all that then she decided to go hunt for elvis now what would have happened if she hadn't taken her shower and done her makeup and did her hair do you think they would have found elvis earlier do you think they could have prevented something we don't know Okay, but he said she took too long. All right, in finding him. So he was afraid that it wasn't going to work. So he used a special breathing technique according to the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into Is Elvis Alive by Gail Brewer Giorgio. And I'm going to give you an example of what um, she's trying to get at here. All right, and this will give you an idea of what he did, what he said he did here, and probably with Joe. Um, he doesn't go into detail here about the body switch, so we really don't know exactly what happened. Um, and he only did a little basic body switch on the movie. It could have been something a little different. It might have happened in timing different. We do not know. Okay, until. He totally passes away, and then we will know more. Okay. So Elvis was a prisoner of his fame. To escape his adoring fans, he would have to leave the mansion late at night, often in disguise, often hidden in the trunk of a car. Sonny and Red West were recorded as saying that one of the reasons Elvis changed cars so often was that there was so little outside his work and his personal environment to interest him, he suffered long bouts of boredom. All right, it's difficult to envision a man who performed be before massive crowds and drove his audience into a frenzy, one of the most recognized faces in the world, so bored that even the la most minute problem gave him an excuse to hold a summit meeting. Yet, that. That seems to be the story. Elvis Presley was a king in exile. Far, I mean, for too long, he was unable to serve the masses while at the same time he hungered to do so. Restlessness, anger, boredom took their toll. It's not difficult to understand why he used pills to anesthetize, uh, anesthetize such as high energy level, enabling him to endure. Locked in his bedroom suite, he ate, watched TV, read, and slept, overindulging in each, which turned into a catch-22 situation. The overindulgence sapped his energy, made him lazy, overweight, and no doubt disappointed in himself. Now, do you want to know why he was gaining weight? Because I guess the gentleman that was doing the body switch was heavier than him. And he felt that during, um, by the time the man expired, they'd weigh the same. But come to find out, being a cancer patient, he lost more weight than planned. So, obviously, Elvis was overweight and the body was not as overweight as he was. Like he didn't weigh the same as what he was. But anyway, for the most part, he did not want his fans to see him in such a condition, which must have set into motion inner frustrations, which in turn egged on an urge for more Anastasia. Anastasia. Let me say it. Anastasia. 
detestation, something like that. Yet Elvis more than once drastically and suddenly turned his situation around by dieting and working out. The price, um, the prince frog turned into a king by the kiss of a sheer willpower. Elvis Presley could meet any challenge. Once a certain challenge was met, he sought higher one. He was bored and uh, with the types of movies he felt forced to make, bored with having to sing the same old songs at concerts, even complaining that one, no one listened to the lyrics of his songs. Even though he held great affection for his longtime associates and friends, there had been had to be an ele that element of boredom which gives way to the dictum familiarity breeds contempt. It was difficult to make new friends. Who should he trust? Would they like him for himself or for the image? And what about safety? Far, uh, far too often the, de uh, the death threats, the threats to kidnap or harm members of his family. He must have questioned often. Was it worth it being Elvis Presley? Was it worth being buried alive? Had Graceland turned into a gilded mausoleum? It's not surprising that he began questioning the purpose of his existence. Finding fame so early in life, Elvis searched, began at an early age, and continual search for new philosophical ideas and thoughts, an insatiable appetite toward discovering the connection with his higher self as well as higher self's relationship with the universe and God. Elvis absorbed and breathed these ideas and could not get enough of them. Yet once they were thoroughly absorbed, he found it challenging to share those ideas. I believe that if Elvis is leading a second life, it is in the field of healing and helping. We know he spent years immersed in spiritualism, which emphasizes the spirit of um, is the prime element of reality. To that end, he sought musical outlet to express his total being. The album How Great Thou Art was a result of that attempt, and it won a Grammy for the best album of the year. It's an excellent album if you ever like to um, his gospel stuff. Very good album. Anyway, one of the many books which prepared him for the study achieved toward achieving the totalness of his higher self was the autobiography of yogi where such mysteries as levitation mental telepathy mentalization materialization excuse me and dematerialization are discussed and is the study of the complete mind over body the ultimate fear of the life of yogi was the leaving of it According to one brochure, no physical disintegration was visible in his body even 20 days after his death. No indication of mold was visible on his skin, nor odor or decay emanated uh, from his body. Elvis spoke of this often while continuing his quest and studies of yoga which basically seeks to liberate the individual from the illusory world um, of phenomena and from a cycle of rebirth. The goal of every yogi is to achieve the state of shamadhi, or dissolution of the personality, which is the first step toward knowledge of the absolute. Elvis Presley could not remain Elvis Presley if he sought such liberation. The shedding of the old skin for the new is taken more literally by some. Some philosophies stress that in order to achieve nirvana, the individual must place himself in a state of oblivion, one outside the physical reach of pain and suffering. Personally, I believe it's the easy way out. As long as we have chosen the physical body on a physical plane of temporary existence, we have to work with it. The physical body is a burden. Um, all of us seek to be the butterfly while living as a caterpillar. Still, the caterpillar must complete its existence before transformation is possible. It's the impatient ones who enter into this state prematurely. Nature is not impatient. Sometimes man is. Elvis Presley was not known to 
for having patience. This state of impatience and unhappiness with physical conditions could have left him vulnerable to various philosophies. If he had chosen a new name and another life while still existing physically on this plane, I believe he'll work through such beliefs, eventually coming to the term that he is Elvis Presley for a reason. Elvis would never have left his life by suicide as it is against his beliefs. And his stepbrother, David Stanley, told everybody that he committed suicide, which absolutely is against Elvis's beliefs. He would never have done that ever, ever, even now. He was embraced the theories of a higher life, but he found solace in the academy's meditation gardens. So impressed was he that he may have duplicated these gardens at Graceland, where the shrine with his misspelled name lies. One of the first things Elvis asked of the spiritual leader was the power to materialize and dematerialize at will. Was this necessary training for the future? This was achieved through the training of yoga, which is divided into eight stages. The first and second stages are the practice of unfailing observant of moral virtues. This would mean cleansing of physical body, nonviolence, and period of chastity. The third and fourth stations, station, stages include practice of certain difficulties of arduous body postures and control of the breath, which may include breathing through either nostril at will and retention of the breath for periods of up to an hour and longer the and more accomplished student which elvis had said to have been the fifth state stage is restraint in which sense organs are trained to take no notice of their of their perceptions which is like a trance and the sixth six stage is steadying the mind and ex excluding worldly thoughts through concentration on a single object the seventh stage is meditation when fully achieved becomes the eighth and final stage samadhi is released all also important are yoga of spells which teaches the continual repetition of magical phrases in which um as a means of disassociating the consciousness the yoga of force teaches physical means including um acrobatic as a means of salvation, while the yoga of dissolution emphasizes breath control and meditation and extraordinary physical endurance. The most important achievement towards salvation and perfection involves the renunciation of the worldly attachments and the self. If Elvis left using this training he left behind many worldly goods including elvis presley faking unconsciousness even pretending to be dead was a trick elvis had used several times prior to august 16th according to red west there was a time when elvis was performing and he began to look sick staggering off stage he collapsed he was taken to the hospital where the doctors told everyone to leave Elvis and return to the motel and await word. And Red writes in his book, Elvis, What Happened? Continuing, he says, they would give us a report as soon as they could. We thought maybe he was dying from some mystery disease, Red relates. They all sat around waiting for the, for the worst. Then... Around one in the morning, there was a knock at Red's door. Damn, man. If it ain't the old son of a bee, Elvis, standing there healthier than a herd of cattle, and he is grinning from ear to ear. Not a doggone thing wrong with him. We all pump him full of questions, and he tells us he is now okay. But when the other boys return to their rooms, Elvis makes a confession to me. The whole collapsing routine was just a big act. Wow. Red also mentions another time. I remember, said Red, one time we were in a hotel in Colorado. 
and he, Elvis, called me to his room and told me to come see him. And there was something he wanted to talk to me about. Well, I got straight to his room, and Elvis was lying out of it on the floor. I thought, oh, well, he just whacked himself with something. So I undressed him and put him in bed and covered him up. But later I got to thinking when we spoke on the phone, uh, spoke to me on the telephone, he was completely straight, like he had, hadn't had taken a thing and got to that room in less than a couple minutes. Now, no drug hits you that hard. So then I suspected that he wasn't asleep or out of it at all. He was wide awake and just faking it just to see how I could handle him. He tested us a lot of times like that. Stories such as these told by many of Elvis's Memphis Mafia make even most naive wonder if Elvis was ever as whacked out as the later reported. This could have easily been a method of putting to practice the theory of mind over body and means of eavesdropping on those close to him, checking their loyalty, listening to what was being said about him. One of his Elvis's friends mentioned that such a thought crossed his mind. It is apparent Elvis could use his body as a decoy, that at will he could make his physical condition appear to be other uh, than what was supposed to be. The question is, how often did Elvis practice this? Could he have heard conversations while in that condition? Conversations that may have led to the firings of his close friends rather than the reported payroll reduction reason? Good thought. Hmm. Interesting. So Red makes a point of saying they could have won Oscars. It would be well to make a point here that shortly before 1977, Elvis told J.D. Summer and the other members of his entourage that he wouldn't be performing as much as following the following year as he had been that they sh should look for other work. Some people questioned Elvis as to what he actually meant, but he just stood by his statement, look for other work. So Elvis had began to clean house for this uh, was about the same time he fired Sonny West and Red West and Dave Heavler. And all had been with him for years, with Red going all the way back to high school. Little by little, one by one, the Memphis Mafia was no more. And they never understood why. So, could it be a possibility that Elvis could have used those Big dead techniques. Um, the, I mean, he could control. It said he can control his breath, control, and through meditation. I mean, the, these stages they were kind of like, um, like almost like they were in like he could do, almost like a comatose state, and force his body to barely breathe. He could, he could actually, like, not even barely breathe. And, and um, I mean, the, this guy here that was teaching, this yogi guy, could, like, um, delay his body from decaying in his death and stuff. It's quite interesting. So, could it be that Elvis used that technique? He might have. And I think that's what he was referring to on the, in, in the video, was that he used that technique um, in or around the time of the body switch. All right. So, I hope you guys enjoyed what next time brings. For now, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the alerts button for future posts. And favorite this and share it if you'd like all along the YouTube logarithm. Have a great day. Bye.